Welcome to our studios here in Atlanta. It is game time. Good to have you start another week of the NBA season. Casey Stern, Candace Parker, the whole thing. See, Isaiah Thomas. This is fun. There's a lot going on. We've got games, uh, smiles. You don't uh, see that. See, now she smiles. Hey, come on. We, we oh. smiling. Yeah, we happy. All right. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm here, but you know why we're happy because we've got a big game. Western Conference, everybody trying to kind of figure it out. But before we get to that, let's talk about what we can't figure out, shall we? Our buddy John Shooter puts up the power rankings and had a better New Year's than we had, did he not, Zeke? So I'm putting my glasses on. So he was drinking a lot of that Sherlock champagne. What is missing here from this picture? Uh, the uh, Golden State Warriors? Yes! Has he, has he heard of a, of a guy named DeMarcus Cousins? I, I, I'm just wondering. Now, if this was he... Trivial Pursuit, it would be like sports and leisure. It would be like, what is wrong here? Um... Every, is anyone in the right spot? I'm betting his house on this one. I anyone? I, 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 no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> you can get John Schumann on Twitter and at NBA.com. Meanwhile, Denver and the Rockets going at it. Nikola. Jokic early. Nikola. How about some bully ball? Oh, too P- little. Oh. You're too little. P.J. Tucker, mouse in the house. And I love that the referees didn't call an offensive foul. When the little guy down there... Garden a big guy, he should get housed. Harden, Capella, everybody on the Rockets getting at it offensively early. Nice look to Tucker, who had seven threes a career high. And then Harden. Candace? Oh my goodness. There, it was wet. Mm. It was wet on the floor, mm. Casey. Mm. Check the uh, check the leakage. Where's that squeegee? As, as my mama would say, mm, mm, mm. got to be more careful. <laughs> That's an up nominee. You get that on uh, Friday mm, with Smitty. Mm, mm. God, man. I'll tell you what, it makes it look easy. Look at a continuous stretch of 35 or more every game. Lead at the break was 10. Rockets extend it. Oh, yeah, Trivial Pursuit before. How about triple word scores? We get a lot of those. There's uh, Tucker in the corner. 21, all from three. And then Capella, who... Candace, look, career high with 31 points and nine boards, we never seem to give him the credit he deserves. He doesn't, and his ability to finish around the basket, those weren't dunks. No. These weren't alley-oop dunks that that Chris Paul or James Harden was throwing him. He was finishing in traffic with with touch. For Harden, a three is pretty much a dunk now, and then Capella says, point guard, no problem. I'll steal it from you. Thank you very much. 125-107, they win it 125-113. Injuries, yes, but resilient. Give them a ton of credit. Game of the day coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday. The streak of 35 a game is over, but Capella gets his career high and a career high seven threes for P.J. Tucker, who talked to us via Arena Link on Game Time about everybody fitting into their role. Every night here is different. Uh, the way James is rolling, uh, you just kind of fill in spots. You know, everybody just do their job, play their role. Uh, you know, he gets it going. He gets our offense fueled. So, uh, you know, one night you might get 10, 11 shots. One night you might not get but one or two. But uh, it's just playing the same way every single game. Well, this is pretty good. Uh, how do you like the uh, three teammates with six threes or more in the same game? Is there any category of three-point related anything that the Rockets don't have now really locked up I in mean, the record book? Maybe with the asterisk of, like, two of your top scorers out then two other people step up and hit more than six threes. Since it's, we're going deep into it's amazing. NBA Clay records. And Steph still yeah, got that, you know, 13, 14. Right. Threes, Maybe. But, but I think I can't find one from a team. <laughs> it's amazing. That, they, they may have every team record. Yeah, you know, I want to kind of hit Makes a, and misses. a bunch of these. Let's start – with P.J. Tucker, Zeke, because you got to have glue guys to win championships in any of the sports, and you can have stars. And P.J. Tucker is a guy who talks there about knowing his role as a coach and as a guy who was a star who needed those players. How much do you enjoy hearing guys like that understand exactly what they're supposed to do to help the team on a given night? You love hearing that from a player, not only understanding his role, but also having in sincere enthusiasm and passion about his role and being able to emotionally give to the team where everybody can enjoy and support and be genuinely happy for James Harden. I, I heard 
no jealousy, no, well, you know, I'm not the guy, but it, it's like everybody's sincerely happy that Harden is playing this well and that the team is playing well. And, you know, winning covers a multitude of sins. So, you know, t when they were down and they wasn't playing well, I thought we would hear a lot more bickering. And we didn't. So that, that speaks a lot to the role players on the team We've also and how they've handled stuff. As the cool kids, I guess, would say, and Candace was cooler than me, so she would know, I, the only thing not in, in his bag right now in terms of Harden is a razor because he's got everything else. And it's been talked about about where he is now in terms of Ooh, the when he great shaved, offensive you know, jump out of players. <laughs> <laughs> some, 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 some living in that beard, some... Some go jump Some out of there. Of power. That's what <laughs> this is why Isaiah didn't want that issue. So <laughs> I'll try not to have anything jump out here. But you talk about the offensive player. As somebody who knows how hard it is, the work you have to put in, both of you guys do, to get to that level, what is it like watching a player who's got that kind of skill set now offensively in Harden? Well, I think early on the basketball purists of the game said, you can't play isolation basketball and win a, win right. a game. Mm -hmm. You know, D'Antoni looked like a fool when he moved James Harden to the point guard position and, and basically gave him the keys of the offense. And in doing that, the floor is so, so spaced because he surrounded him with, you know, three-point shooting mm -hmm. with his ability to play make. And that's the thing. James Harden makes the correct play. Yeah. He yeah, is not, assistant. yeah, he's not selfish in the sense that he's going to take something that the defense doesn't give him. He goes in there and Clint Capella benefits. And that's how you measure a great player. What, what do the players around you do? Are, mm -hmm. they, are they raising their level of play? And honestly, P.J. Tucker is having an, an outstanding year this year uh, in itself. Let me ask you this as we kind of close out this spot here with the Rockets. They've grown, but a lot of talk goes back to the offseason about losing some of that defensive prowess. If they get CP3 healthy and are as constituted, are they good enough to give the Warriors the trouble they gave them last year? The, the, the Rockets will always have the question mark until they actually do it. Uh, you know, they, they've knocked at the door a couple of times. And they didn't open it, right? Uh, CP3, James Harden, those two as individuals have knocked on the door a couple of times. This whole window of opportunity that we talk about, it's been there for them a couple of times. When do they step through and when do they grab the trophy? And until they do that, there's going to be a question mark. And, you know, they're great in the regular season, but let's see the playoffs. All right, uh, nothing jumping out of beards on set, but we're all jumping out of our seats watching this guy play basketball because uh freak and then i mean how many, there aren't enough names Need he's got longer the freak in his beard uh, okay. although the the unis may be uh not exactly as nice as his game Kyrie is back what does it mean for the celtics in uncle drew's return we'll take a look coming up tuesday on nba tv uh yes the, the two to my left are involved but really it's 3d's night just asking Timberwolves and Thunder, Knicks and Warriors, of course, because the Knicks, right? It's Tuesday night. Players only, baby. Players only, baby. Come Auto on, Trader, now. Trader, pregame. Come on, now. You, you got to say it right. You, you got to say ahead, it say like it. you mean say it. Say it. Mean it. Players Give it to only, me. baby. Players only. <laughs> I like that. Um, we're, we're going to... Uh, say it with some feeling. We're going what to, what uh, night is it? How about issues only, baby? Because that's uh, kind of been like the uh, backdrop for the T-Wolves. Uh, here's Ryan Saunders on uh, now moving forward with Minnesota. Definitely didn't expect to be uh, standing here. Um, you know, I'll, uh, I'll first off say how how much I respect Coach Tibbs and uh, Coach Andy Greer as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's tough when, you, when you, you spend so much time with, with uh, people, you know, on the road or just in general, and uh, then you see uh, you're not going to see those people as much anymore. Um, that's a tough thing. So um, I'm thankful for the opportunity, though. Um, and moving forward, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing, you know, progress on the court and uh, helping grow this team. All right, from uh, Ryan Saunders to uh, Area 21 and our boy KG, uh, who had a lot to say on uh, Tibbs, obviously, uh, who he knows. He said, good coach, going to land on his feet wherever he's at. He'll get another opportunity. Um, as, uh, by the way, congrats, uh, and obviously not the way that he expected to Ryan Saunders, not only in the coaching job, but uh, and I 
know what this feels like. That's why I went with this. Being the only coach who will get carded when he gets, goes out <laughs> with the team. Um, the Timberwolves. You go through all that they went through, everything with Jimmy Butler. Now you lose the coach. How worried are you for the growth of the young talent that through all of this, like Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins and others, Zeke, are trying to take the next steps in their career? Um, I'm, I'm not worried about the, the, the players as much as I am about the organization. Okay. Because they, they really did take a step back. Um, you know, I, I thought when Sam Mitchell was there, I, I thought he was doing a, a, a great job with those young players. You had Levine, you had Wiggins, you had Katz. They, they, I mean, they were coming along, and they were doing all right. Um, and then you decided to break that trio up. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was a good young trio, and I thought Tibbs made a bet on Butler on Chicago, and he went and got him. And when you made that bet, I thought he and Tibbs, I thought Butler and Tibbs would be closer together. They would be, you know, joined at the hip, and they would be able to take it. I think the disconnect came when, when, when Butler and, and Tibbs, somehow they got sideways. And when they got sideways, not only did it fracture their relationship, but I think it also fractured the franchise. So now the franchise is left scrambling because that relationship and that gamble on Butler didn't work out. I I'm going to ask you this, Candace, as a player, because from outside looking in, I'm sure I speak for a lot of people. And I just think from a common sense standpoint of, you know, we always hear about millennials now, and I think about coaches that I've talked to on the baseball side and how they need to treat it differently today. When you've got a roster with all the youth that they had, can it work with a coach like Tom Thibodeau? I mean, you paid for Bobby. I mean, we've seen coaches have a lot of success who are tough, but in today's day and age, can you be that way with young players at a professional level? It's a balance. But with this young talent, and especially up until this point, they've been doing this yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And now the coach is gone, Jimmy Butler's gone. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to be like this. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the thing. You know, Tibbs is the way he is. That's that, we know him as a coach, obviously. Um, we've heard things down in, in Chicago with Boylan and, and his yeah. attempt to kind of bring that out of players. But until you want that fire, that desire to be a top player come out of you, it's, it's not going to happen. And right now, I mean, it, if you're not looking at anybody else in the mirror, where this franchise goes is going to be where Cat and Andrew Wiggins takes it. We're going to see Golden State in this players only doubleheader. And but, but yes, go ahead. Let Z. me go back to no, that because I, I I do think from a coaching standpoint, the the coaches do have to find a way to to bring that that greatness and inspire you to reach down deeper than you thought you could yourself. We. You know, we watched it with Phil Jackson, with Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. okay? We watched Pat Summit do it to you. You watch Coach Knight do it to me. When I got to the NBA, you know, Chuck Daly, you know, had his way of doing it. So the, the great players in this league, you know, whether it be Pat Riley, you know, you know, tweaking Magic Johnson or mm -hmm. Kareem a little bit or, you know, Dwayne Wade or, you know, Shaq, whoever, you, the, the great coaches, they have to find a way not only to just rest on your talent, but they got to find a way to inspire you to give more. And I don't feel like Katz or Wiggins have had that, that fire to get inspired to do more. Yeah, and I'll, I'll recite something near close to here. I've used this before, but Leo Mazzoni, longtime pitching coach for the Braves, told me years ago I always use this, and I know Griff loves this if he's watching, is coaching sometimes is about knowing where to blow smoke and where to light fire. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's some of what I don't know that they've always gotten right. I think that's from the outside what I don't know if Jimmy got right. I, those guys seem to, I, you don't want to use the word coddle, but you need to, right? You need to sometimes be able to yeah. push a guy with positivity too, right? Yeah, but, but you know, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a fine line, you know, and, and that's, why, that's why the coaches that we just talked about, right. they're all in the Hall of Fame. Right, sure. Because they, know, they knew how to, how to get it out of you mm -hmm but yet make you realize that it was the best for you, right? But, you know, I, I went for a year, and, you know, I, I didn't like <laughs> Chuck Daly. I didn't like Coach Knight. Yeah. I didn't like my high school coach. But now that I'm out of it, mm -hmm. I'm, sh I'm glad I had those two sure. coaching me, you know? And I'm sure you felt that way about Coach Summit sometimes. Definitely. But to add to that, it, 
takes a special player yes. to be able to look yourself in the mirror and understand that you have faults and you have things that you have to do better. And sometimes yeah. what you think is right is completely wrong. Yeah. And I don't know if they have done that. I don't know. But right now we're going to find out whether yeah. they do it or not because yeah. everything around them that has been the quote-unquote problem those are the only two that are left. But accountability, right? I mean, you can't win without having it yourself in the mirror in addition to kind of everybody else be interesting to see. I mentioned uh, don't, don't sleep on that Warriors game, not because the, the Knicks can't beat them, but home losses, we've seen some interesting uh, situations. Go look in that closet, the boogeyman uh, perhaps Ooh. could be out of it. Uh, we got more nice coming treat. up on game time. Ooh. Did we say some issues? Uh, the Sixers, too. We'll get into the process.